How do you guys? It's look at Geek Gaming Scenix, and in this video, we're gonna paint up some models and have a look at some that are older than me. I'll catch you after this. So guys, my last video of the year, I said I might work on some projects at home. That didn't happen because something, something horrendous happened, which I'll talk about at the end of the video, so people who are interested can watch the video. But when I was putting the tree away and getting wrapped up after Christmas, I went in the loft and I found this box. The history of this box is um, a viewer of the channel sent me this about two years ago and I said, oh, that'll work out with some nice videos. And then I just got so busy with work that I completely forgot about it. I put it in the loft and I was like, so happy that I opened it up and like, oh, wow, I remember this. Perfect time, perfect opportunity to have a look at these older, Citadel models, still in the box. I don't know whether they're complete. I've not opened any of them yet. Um, but we can have a good look inside. If they're painted or whatever, we can clean them up and we can bring them to a new release of life. And I thought it'd be nice to have a good look through. You guys can tell me what some of them are because I'm not going to know anything about most of these apart from the ones that have got a box. Uh, and I just thought it'd be really interesting. So let's open a few up. Let's have a good look at the models. Uh, and then let's restore a few. I'll catch you after this. So this box is full of mid 80s Citadel models, probably a bit earlier. If you know any dates and things when actually things came out, please link below and let me know. The one that bit that was really interesting to me was this little flora tub. It's full of models that I kind of recognize, but obviously they're the original models or maybe they are second editions or whatever, I, I don't really know. So any inf information will be great. Now the ones that I got really excited for were the ones in the boxes. I feel this is where Games Workshop are missing out. Unfortunately there is two of the models missing, but the boxes have so much character, uh, it reminds me of an old PC game, and the fact that they named the models on the back, there's a bit of a story about them, and I really like that. Now this model was a bit of a surprise, this is the great unclean one, it's about as big as a Primaris Space Marine. Talk about scale creep, eh? <laughs> and look at that paint job, them colours are vibrant. Now this model really took me by surprise, this is the Green Dragon. I know they're not supposed to be pretty big, but because of the size of the box I was expecting a pretty large model. Now the paint job on these, for their age, are not that bad. Now the one thing that does put me off old school miniatures is the vibrant, highly saturated colours. And usually when they've been painted with the older paints, people paint them a bit thickly. However, these wasn't too bad. But I thought what I best do is give them a strip. Now usually if you're doing plastic models, I wouldn't recommend this, but I'm just gonna bath them in acetone. That's why I'm removing any plastic pieces that I know about. Acetone's great, it just removes paint so quickly. Um, you literally just chuck them in tubs, pour some acetone over them, and then they leave them stood for a couple of minutes give them a brush and it, it just comes off and you're left with a model that's I'll say 90% clean there's areas that are hard to get to or the primer won't come off but you get some nice models pretty quickly now I'm not a massive fan of the old heavily saturated colors um, a very bright vibrant models especially when the goblins and orcs and models like these the chaos dwarves now, a lot of people keep going on about this bland shit style. I've been painting bland and shit for a long time. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that. No, I, I, I don't paint like bland shit, so I, I, I've, I've never actually tried to do it. But what I actually do like is painting pretty dark colors uh, that you can wash and they'll look relatively good relatively quickly. And I do like that sort of muted colors, low saturation. Uh, it seems to look a lot nicer. What I'm going to do, because I'm doing black armour, is what I learned from my trying to improve my painting over the last few months, is if you want a black armour, paint it dark grey. Now, usually I go on with a solid colour. I'm using contrast paints to help me get the shading and the, the highlighted areas. Armour's slightly reflective. So this is what I'm hoping the contrast paint will help with. To show that the armor is slightly reflective. And I just bath that all over the models. Contrast paints have been very helpful 
in me painting quite quickly. And I am very happy with the results that I get with contrast paints. It has took up, it's been a bit of a learning curve, but I do really enjoy using them. But some models just don't lend themselves to contrast paint. You have to go in traditionally base coat them, even if it is just a bit of a rough base coat, and we'll tidy them out later with a wash. For the areas that I want to be not as reflective like the leather boots, I'm painting these with a black grey. I want black boots, but I don't want them to be too black because leather is slightly reflective, even matte leather. So we do this and when we put the wash on, you do get some subtle shading, which looks nice. I'm really enjoying painting these models. The character in older models really helps me enjoy my painting. And the one models that did capture all that are the goblins. Now, I'm a big fan of goblins. I'm a big fan of dwarves and to do chaos dwarves which i've never done and some older orcs using this style of painting i don't actually think they look that old school they don't look as comic booky using some base coats and washers just to bring them up i think it they, they look like you could fit them in with some pretty modern miniatures what do you think I really do like the aesthetic and I'd love to build an army of these but I don't think my pockets are deep enough to do that. But I would like to complete this collection so if anybody knows of the, the other two models please let me know. Now when it comes to just highlighting, especially on the orc skin, I don't like using oversaturated colours. I've got, I'm using the base colours again as a highlight over the wash and then for the final highlight I'm just mixing in some sand colour into the olive green. and. That just really sort of ties it in and as you can see I'm painting very much like that sort of foundry system. Um, I don't overly edge highlight with strong contrasting colours. I just sort of roughly paint that on with very thin paint and what actually happens is when it dries in it's it's like a little, it's quite smooth, it's not like a proper creamy blend. Now dry brushing is something that I haven't done for quite a while. I'm quite shocked by that, <laughs> but I haven't, so I just thought I'd have a mess around with some new dry brushes uh, to see what they're like, and I do like the effect of a, a very soft brush like this, it's not something I've done before. And to finish them off, I am not going to do them goblin green, chuck some sand on top and then dry brush with evil sun is it called? <laughs> I'm going to use my base ready. Um, Links to my shop and all your local shops around the world will be linked below. Uh, but it's a very earth based mix with some desaturated grass in there and it just looks great straight out the pot. All I do is put down the fast dry basing glue, put it down a bit neater than I'm doing, I didn't mean to get it on his feet but I didn't have my glasses on, <laughs> and just stick it in there and give it a wipe off and they're done and you can base your army in literally seconds um, and I think one of these uh, bags will do around 300 to 350 depending on how you do it. I really do like this method of basing hence why I brought it out as a product. It's very quick, it's very effective and you don't have to do three, four, five, even ten steps. It's just one step and done. Uh, well, two if you call the dip in a step. Uh, but you can also put a tuft on there and things like that if you wish. But I think they'll look fine just straight out of the pot on a small base like that. I think they've come out rather well. I didn't put a lot of time into these because I'm working on some other videos. But I really wanted to paint them. It was a nice break to just give me and paint something that I really wanted to paint. Now I'm going to put them on a display shelf and over time I'll try and find others or if you guys can point me in the direction where to complete sets, I'll just add to it and build to it over time so I'll build like a nice little collection of these awesome models. So guys, I've really enjoyed this video. I like old models. I like metal models. I like the character they've got. There's just something about old models that you just don't get on the new plastics from Games Workshop. It would be nice to see a bit of that, but I know it just wouldn't fit the aesthetic anymore, but I just really enjoy them. And if anybody's got any links to the ones that are missing of the uh, Chaos Dwarves, I'd love to buy some more. Um, the Chaos Dwarves are, are lovely. I'd like to actually have a nice little set of them, uh, so I'm going to keep my eyes out, maybe on my old hammer pages for some more. Um, but... If you've enjoyed this video guys, let me know. I've got an absolute stash of models that are from that era, like 85. Uh, I've even got some from the like late 70s, early 80s that I've just found out about. So it would be really nice to actually deep delve into and see like the history of them and what they were used for. Because the models that I haven't seen, they're like lizard men, but with really long necks. Really weird. 
I've never seen it like it before. Um, but if you've enjoyed it, guys, let me know in the comments below. As I was going to say at the start of this video, I've had an horrendous Christmas. Now, I wasn't going to put this in a video, but this charity has really helped me out. And I just want to give something back and let you get raise awareness for this charity. Now, it's a bit niche is this charity so if you're not interested i don't i don't expect anybody to put their hands in the pocket i just want to raise awareness for this charity because it's really helped me out and i just want to give something back um now for those that don't know i have two dachshunds dachshunds are sausage dogs okay i've got two of them i've got a standard and a mini and uh, a year ago gatsby's back went um it's called it's a condition called ivdd um and it made him paralyzed from the chest down he had an operation, cost thousands of pounds, and it got him back walking again. Spent all year getting him back to normal. Now, at Christmas, it went again. And I was like, this is it. There's no way we can go through all this again. However, he went into the vets. They said, no, it's operable. Um, so we've had it done again. What I'm getting at is all the aftercare is hard work it costs a fortune for the stuff to do everything like push chairs ginger leads pens because you've got to keep them pretty still and closed in this charity just send it out to you and look after you know give you everything you need all you've got to do is when you finish with it which were 12 months i mean we, we was nursing gatsby back to normal over 12 months he was starting to walk again just got him right and uh, we sent everything back and then it it happened again and the They've sorted it all out. They've even sent us a bigger push chair this time because we've been a big, bigger dog. Absolutely amazing. Dedicated to Dash Hounds is a charity for people with Dash Hounds. I understand that, but I just want to raise a little bit of awareness. And if you do want to give anything, all the links and everything and that are below. I'm not asking you to. I'm just, I want to give that company something, raise a little bit of money if I can for them because it's been such a help to me. Uh, and it's very personal and you know what dogs are like it's worse than it's worse than humans uh I've, it's been it was a horrendous christmas uh yeah it, it wasn't nice <laughs> as in my girlfriend didn't see christmas with the little one this year or anything so it's been it's been a bit of a dark year sorry to end this video on a dark one but i really wanted to do that um but gatsby's okay and with another eight months of uh aftercare we should get him back on his feet but anyway guys thanks for watching thanks for tuning in if you like to support me do check all my products and everything below and one thing i will add guys because of brexit and how everything is very complicated at the moment if you want to buy anything in your country look at the bottom of the page where it'll show you all our resales resellers worldwide and from them links, it'll take you to a local shop near you where you can order from, or local-ish, where we don't have to deal with all the, do we charge that or not yet. The thing is, we don't know. The postage services still don't know. We're trying to sort everything out with the accountants and try and figure it all out so we can automate it. Um, nobody knows what's happening yet. And once it's actually in place, it might all change anyway. Um, so, yeah, great. So for the foreseeable future, we're not posting to Europe, uh, but we can sort it out that we deal with the resellers so if you do want to buy from your resellers check the links below and it'll take you to this where you can buy it locally to yourself bit of a longing but i'll uh, i'll see you again for the next video love love love